So we've got resource pressure, population pressure, and growth slowing down. And how do we adjust to this? And I don't think capitalism is designed to handle it. It doesn't handle the finiteness of resources. There isn't a single economic theory um, which contains that idea. In all economic theories, you just reach outside um, and take the resources that you need, regardless of the fact that they may be running out. No. This is a shocking uh, uh, deficit in our economic thinking. And uh, in terms of um, the environment, my view is 80% at least of what you do uh, to be efficient in a world of resource pressure, economizing mm. on resources, uh, will be beneficial to, to, to the environment. And some of it will yeah. not, but 80 plus is something I'll accept right now. Yeah. How, how well do you think the broader investment sector understands uh, this dynamic? I think they, they really are willing to consider uh, resource limitation. And uh, how willing they will be to take part two, which is mm. uh, the consequent slowing down of uh, GDP in the developed mm. world, and then eventually uh, in the developing world, I'm not sure. They'll be less eager. That is very much built into our bones, isn't it? Mm. That we'll grow forever. And uh, my thesis, of course, is that we can't, we can't grow physically indefinitely. We have to slow down rapidly. We have to concentrate on qualitative improvements. Mm. You can have a perfectly fine life, and incidentally, a perfectly successful company, and uh, a perfectly high return portfolio mm. without growth. You need profitability, but you can have a stable output uh, and, and make good money. And I'm not sure that people are aware of that, despite the fact mm -hmm. that they have slowly but surely been reconciled to the fact that high growth countries do not necessarily make you a fortune in the stock market. High growth companies, they really understand now. They used to think that they would mm -hmm. naturally win. They now know that, in fact, they have underperformed for as long as we can measure them. So they've got that connection. Growth does not e equal automatic return in the stock market. And therefore, they're prepared, one would hope, to accept the general thesis that you do not need economic growth to have a decent economic return. CPSL, the Cambridge Programme for Sustainability Leadership, focuses really on how individuals can, can become leaders um, in terms of thinking around sustainability issues, resource issues, climate change. Issues. I mean, what, what lessons would you have for them? I mean, where do, where do you expect the leadership to come from? I'm hoping that some of the this? people at your program will go on to become finance minister, yeah. uh, prime minister or presidents, uh, because they're the people who will have to save us. Um, capitalism can't deal with long horizon problems. Mm. They can't deal with externalities. And uh, it's pretty easy to prove um, an individual can drag a company with them for 10 years, and that's very helpful. Mm. But what they have to concentrate on is influencing, first of all, um, governments, and secondly, the general public, in any way that they can. And to have a corporation lobby the government yep. or put their weight behind an environmental concept with the government is very powerful. Individuals can be very influential if they state their case emphatically. And... Uh, we will need all the help that we can get. The other thing, by the way, we should just mention in passing is the, the, the hoax or the uh, fantasy that, that growth, physical growth, can be maintained indefinitely. Physical growth cannot be maintained very quickly over hundreds of years. There is simply no place to park your physical goods. Okay. There is no place to park your people if you keep growing at even 1%. Uh, you can't do that. But much the most um, limiting, I think, is, is uh, the laws of thermodynamics, which is every time you run an engine, every time you have energy, every time you heat a room, there is a lot of heat involved. And the heat has to be dissipated. The only way it can be done is through infrared radiation. You can calculate exactly the rate at which that occurs. And it has been worked out that if you compound uh, energy production from any source at all, forget carbon dioxide and climate change, any source at all, 
If you increase it at 2.3%, um, then the thermodynamic effect uh, multiplies by 10 every 100 years. And in 400 years, that's 100,000 times, uh, you boil. Mm. The, the planet would reach boiling point. So you know long before 400 years, uh, far more uh, limiting than my arguments about where you park your television sets, mm. uh, we're, we're, we're out of business. So you have to understand it. Even if you do it through wind power yeah. and solar power and nuclear, you cannot grow indefinitely. You have to reconcile yourself to having qualitative improvements, yep. a better life, uh, limited population, and, uh, and concentrate on other ways in which the quality of life can be improved, which might incidentally mm -hmm. be a whole lot better than the, the way we run our lives today.